Thank you for the opportunity to present. Uh, well, orange is not intentional. I didn't know that IMPC color, color was orange, but I thought it was seasonal. So um, the time is ripe for us to work together, I guess. That's how we can interpret this auspicious sign. So uh, Alex Morosovic from Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, my group and the Stanford group develop infrastructure for the ClinGen uh, project, and I'll be talking about a core about the core element of that infrastructure, which is a little registry, which helps us integrate information that's important for curating variants for their pathogenicity to inform clinical interpretation of the human genome. Other domains of ClinGen knowledge are validity of genes, which is where Comp more more, more directly uh, contributed in the past, but as we've seen. Uh, the link uh, trend toward uh, uh, linking uh, sequence level variation is going probably to be important going forward. Uh, also, uh, the third domain of uh, ClinGen knowledge is actionability knowledge. So what's the problem we are solving? Uh, it looked like a non-problem initially, but it emerged as actually the core problem. How do we integrate information about a variant if it comes from different corners of the world? Um, unless we use the same name, right? So the name is a necessary condition for that. Uh, the problems are actually deeper than that, uh, but let's start with the name. I, haven't we solved this problem? Uh, well, uh, isn't genomic reference enough? Uh, well, which reference? You know, geneticists actually do use transcripts, many of them, half a million available in major sources. And also the genome is becoming more of a graph and there are multiple versions of it. So reference is not there uh, to solve the problem. But even if we agreed on a reference, we still would have problems with uh, more complex variants than simple SNPs, say indels, which do not have actually unique HGVS expressions to agree on and literature is full of examples of, uh, uh, you know, uh, different variants uh, being uh, described using different uh, uh, AGVS expressions, but corresponding to the same CID, which is identifier of the allele register we'll be talking about. So the paper on the allele register actually will appear in 10 days in the special uh, ClinGen issue of human mutation. And there'll be a number of ACG talks, including on the allele register at the ACG. So, um, a little register is not just about naming, it's actually allowing in linking of uh, information about genetic variants. You know, for about 50 years now, the idea of linking information has followed the whole data warehousing model where you put the data together. As part of this warehousing, you actually need to talk, uh, address the identity problem. You know, how do you know that two different parties are talking about the same thing? So this deduplication is actually solved for ev at every warehouse level. We are moving actually to a new world now, as of uh, probably about five years ago, a huge trend has started on the web, which is called linked data. So Berners-Lee, the founder of the web, uh, 10 years ago, uh, defined this new set of technologies called linked data technologies. They have linked it for about five years, but about five years ago, big search engine actually adopted these technologies, and you're starting to see changes, or like, uh, you know, Google search not just giving you links when you uh, do a search, but giving you a info box at the top of all these links telling you something about the topic you are interested. Well, the way it works is Google now forces, you know, websites to provide data using knowledge and data using these linked data technologies. They put the pieces together, and this is a kind of graph. Uh, you can imagine every site adding a link in this knowledge graph and then them presenting this knowledge to the end user. So uh, Berners-Lee started this 10 years ago. He was the inventor of the web, right? Uh, because he was not actually happy with the impact of his project, <laughs> believe it or not. He said, well, this is not exactly what I meant. It meant something bigger. So what is it? Instead of uh, a web of linked links where people can go from one site to another, he envisioned a web of linked data where agents, you know, software can actually on one's behalf go to different sites, put the pieces together and present something like an info box of Google. But I think we are now in the uh, web of linked data where the web of hyperlinks was actually in early 90s. So I think that during the time of the comp project, actually, if you're planning 10, 15 years down the road, you'll see a similar revolution in terms of how the data is integrated to the revolution of the web, even though that's hard to imagine, right? 
Uh, but we are working toward this vision and uh, using these technologies to integrate the knowledge about genetic variants, which actually is such a challenge that what can't imagine a single database, a single warehouse solving the problem, right? So these technologies uh, come right in time for us, uh, the same way the web came right in time for the Genome Project, right? One can imagine that the impact of the Genome Project would be much less without the web emerging at the same time. We see this knowledge of uh, linked data about the genetic variation actually being created at the same time <laughs> concurrently with these other technological revolutions which we want, would like to harness. So, in uh, the effort, this effort was a Klingen consortium effort and involved a couple of years of actually deciding what a variant is. So, <laughs> believe it or not, design decisions actually are uh, involved in this, not just um, uh, implementation. So, basically, we went with the concept of a cano canonical allele, which is independent of its definition in the genome or transcript context, and separate concepts of the protein and nucleotide level alleles. So the registry implementation involved actually a lot of engineering to put half a million of different transcripts in memory so that one can quickly resolve the identity based on the sequence level alignments. So the registry uh, contains many transcripts, whole genome assemblies, uh, amino acid sequences uh, that were aligned. Uh, and uh, variants from all major sources are registered. Uh, if you go to the user interface, actually, which is a minor part of it, the register is meant to actually mainly to serve as an infrastructure for other software, but it does have its own user interface where you can put any name of the variant and find its other names and locations and transcripts and such. Uh, if you don't know exactly, you found in the literature incomplete description uh, of a variant, say amino acid change and gene name, which is typical, you can find all the variants, for example, and pick the one that you think was being referenced. Uh, this is a kind of big, complete picture of the uh, uh, allele registries implementation. So one can uh, not only work with individual variants, but large amounts of variants, you know, millions in VCF files or AGVS expressions or other identifiers. And a registry provides two services, lookup and registration. So if no one has seen the variant, you'll actually get the identifier of it so that somebody else seeing the same variant will use the same identifier. So this is not a database where to get an identifier you need to go to a lengthy process. Registry does it at the rate of 100,000 variants per second. So you can, we, we, we envision in registering every variant seen in every sequencing project in the world and even the variants that are artificial, you know, from functional assays and also hypothetical variants uh, from computational predictions. So the key is actually the bandwidth. Uh, the variant has, as I said, UIs, but it also has APIs, application program interfaces, and uh, follows these linked data technologies called JSON-LD, JSON linked data, which allows all the knowledge to be uh, represented as a graph, essentially, in so-called RDF format, using ontologies and so on. So currently we provide links to all major resources, but also we support uh, on-demand linking, which means not only you can register your variants, but you can register that you have something to say about it, so if somebody, a program can go to your site and get that part of the graph, so that somebody can see the big picture of uh, knowledge about the variant. So, uh, as I mentioned, bandwidth was the main uh, design goal here, and dbSNP can be registered in 15 minutes, uh, my variant in about 90 minutes, and so on. Clean one in 40 seconds, only hundreds of thousands of variants, right? Uh, registry being adopted in the sense that uh, major databases, you know, Civic, uh, CLINVAR, uh, are adopting identifiers and putting link links back to the allele registry to their users. And um, we are um, mm, uh, now have a number of use cases of linked data. You know, I'll just go through one of them. For example, because we, we are linking information about amino acid change with nucleotide change, we can ask questions of this integrated data. Uh, for example, we can ask uh, how many nucleotide variants uh, in ClinVar uh, cause the same amino acid change and have different pathogenicity assertions. You know, this is a variant, 31 variants have, are variants of unknown significance. Uh, mm, uh, 31 uh, variants fall into this kind of category. Here's an example uh, of a variant 
uh, of two nucleotide LIV variants that have different assertions, but one is deemed pathogenic. Uh, another variant of unknown significance, despite the fact that they cause the same amino acid change. Right? So uh, I'll show you a quick example how this linked data can be visualized as a graph using Neo4j, uh, a graph database in a query language. Um, for example, if you look at these uh, conflicting pathogenicity assertions as a graph, you'll see nucleotide variants and amino acid variants. Uh, and if you zoom in, you see the relation is contradicts. Uh, because they have different assertions and they cause the same amino acid change. Right? You can expand the graph and see what's going on, and you'll get information from uh, allele frequency databases, from ClinVar, and so on, all contributing different edges. Now, this is a simple case. Well, one variant uh, has um, uh, uh, one pathogenicity assertion, another the other, but the other was evaluated later. Uh, you know, here is the contradiction, right? These are uh, one is, uh, 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 this is the contradiction of pathogenicity assertions, and this is difference in the evidence, and because this one has uh, a stronger evidence that was evaluated later, you may try to uh, probably trust this one. You also can see the link toward the amino acid change. They cause the same amino acid change. You can have a link to their allele frequencies. So in the context of all this information, you can actually figure out which one to trust. Uh, a more complex case where we have actually uh, three variants that have uh, one pathogenicity assertions and one variant the other. And, uh, but uh, while uh, this and that variant have a single piece of evidence, supporting evidence, this one has multiple supporting evidence. Moreover, there are three of them, right? So we would probably trust this. Uh, uh, but of course, you can examine links to allele frequencies and other supporting information before uh, evaluating this one. So, uh, in terms of mouse uh, 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 links to, to mouse variants, uh, I think the link toward uh, homologous amino acid change in mouse and human, that link needs to be established, as well as something equivalent to the mouse uh, database link in nucleotide amino acid variants, so that these kinds of types of information can be collated and used for inference. Um, one important uh, bit is, again, uh, adding new layers of data. and uh, uh, we actually kind of uh, ate our own dog food, as the computer engineers say. You know, we try to use our own project to actually test this concept of layering information on top of the existing information using our allelic epigenome project. So this is um, as part of the data analysis coordination for the uh, epigenome project. It started 10 years ago. Uh, just a one month ago, actually, we published the final paper where we link genetic and epigenetic variation by looking at uh, allelic imbalances due to regulatory uh, variation in the human genome. Uh, using information from 13 donors, uh, about 50 whole genome bisulfate sequencing experiments involving 27 tissues, nine cell types. So the key element was really whole genome bisulfate sequencing and looking at allelic imbalances that may be caused by variants uh, in cis. Uh, uh, we, um, each methylation of each CPG on every reads was assessed in the context of the uh, specific allele. Uh, and uh, spe special focus was on the reads spanning heterozygous loci, uh, where the heterozygous loci are either markers or um, actually causative variants causing the change in, in met methylation in cis. It turned out actually thousands of uh, transcription factor binding loci actually have these kinds of allelic imbalance patterns, and the effects, in fact, are mediated uh, by transcription factor binding affinities to different alleles. Um, so uh, also we developed a sensitivity map of the genome in terms of a sensitivity of regulatory elements to genetic variation as estimated based on frequencies of these imbalances at heterozygous loci. So uh, the big message is CPG islands, CPG-rich promoters are buffered against change. So allelic imbalances are less likely to occur than, a, than the background, whereas CPG poor promoters and enhancers particularly are highly sensitive to allelic variation, where allelic imbalances are highly likely to occur. So the most actually unexpected pattern was uh, stochasticity. So what we mean by that is that there's no gradual difference. Even though percent methylation is fractional between the two alleles, there's no intermediate level of methylation. You know, it's either on or off, 
What's different is the fraction of on or off states, uh, which means that uh, the alleles actually uh, modulate the frequency of transcription factor being of the bound state of the transcription factor, with some factors preferring methylation, some preferring non-methylation, and actually this is true for majority of hundreds of transcription factors we looked into. So the message of this uh, allelic epigenome map is that about 5% of the epigenome shows absolute allelic imbalance, which means you know beta values of at least 30%. Uh, these um, imbalances associated with allelic transcription in cysts, so these are marks of gene regulation. And uh, we have about 200,000 such loci uh, with these uh, allelic imbalances, you know, uh, thousands of them regulatory loci, and each individual actually harbors uh, at least 200 variants that are in peripheric selection and show these allelic imbalances, which means that these variants do have impact, presumably, on human health. So how did we integrate this um, uh, through the, uh, well, here's a, uh, here is how these uh, user-contributed links show up in the allele registry along with these other links. And if you click on it, you get some machine-readable content, JSON-LD. You probably will not use it, but your programmers will be happy because they can serialize it as a graph. They follow the latest standard of knowledge representation, right? They can be understood by Google. And uh, they contain information about transcription factor binding, tissue of origin, donor, and so on. And so uh, how do we then uh, integrate, say, these how can we make maybe make use of mouse in light of these uh, new, new understanding uh, of the allelic imbalances in human? Well, I think uh, you know F1 crosses, right? Uh, my dream uh <laughs> dream project would be actually deep whole genome bisulfate sequencing of F1 crosses because there we can actually uh, create allelic uh, het het loci. Uh, and actually, the readout uh, of allelic imbalances is a very direct. No need of for human genomes for mouse sequencing because we already know the genomes, uh, and then homology to human will actually allow us to uh, validate uh, the effects of these variants on uh, gene regulation. So, in summary, uh, kind of, I have two more slides. Uh, we can integrate mouse variation on the regulatory level, uh, amino acid level, uh, and this is. Uh, moreover, we can actually be even more looser, you know. For example, we can look at hotspots, uh, orthologous, uh, homologous hotspots of mutations in humans. Uh, we can look at functional domains that are uh, homologous in mouse and human, and then transfer this knowledge, links this knowledge to inform interpretation of human genetic variation. Um, we need actually a mouse allele registry for that, and uh, uh, Carl Bolt from Jackson Labs just got an internal pilot project to work with us to actually apply this technology to bid build a mouse uh, allele registry with a view that this will be a core infrastructure component for integrating mouse data and human data at the uh, sequence level. So in conclusion, uh, ClinGen allele registry links information about genetic variants using new technologies looking forward 10 years from now to the web of linked data. It applies these technologies to uh, nucleate a distributed uh, data ecosystem centered on human genetic variants. So it's not a single database, it's just a core element of infrastructure allowing everybody to contribute. And that um, similar approaches that can be applied uh, uh, to human variation can be applied to mouse and other mod model organisms so that this ecosystem starts in including model organisms. So with this, I'd like to acknowledge uh, members of my lab uh, who have uh, led the allele registry work and also those who have led uh, allelic epigenome mapping as part of the uh, last major paper of the Roadmap Epigenome Project. Uh, also our ClinGen collaborators uh, who have uh, defined actually standards that we've implemented for the allele registry. Uh, Sharon Plon, who is the PI on the uh, uh, Baylor uh, component of ClinGen, with us as a subcontract from Sharon, uh, and also Carlos Bustamante, who is the contact PI of the Stanford Baylor uh, group that's developing ClinGen infrastructure. Thank you.